Do you ever wonder what motor racing might be like in the future? What's the automotive world going to look like in, say, 25 years' time? Maybe the top drivers will be racing hover cars, perhaps they'll be competing in space, or maybe drivers will have been done away with altogether in favour of sophisticated, AI-controlled high-tech machines. Although judging by this recent clip of an autonomous car, that might still be a little way off yet. But this got me thinking. What if you'd asked someone a couple of decades ago what they might think motor racing would be like in the 2020s? What would they have said? And wouldn't it have been cool if back then that someone had turned their future projections into a video game? Well, someone did. The year is 2027. A new discipline rules motorsport racing. The drivers are no longer in their single-seater. They drive from a remote cockpit. There, they can feel every vibration, every acceleration, but they can also take a lot more risks. Only the best driver on the track can hope to win. Okay, we're still a little way from 2027. Or maybe we aren't if you're watching this video seven years after I posted it. Or maybe it's 2045 and all the predictions I made earlier have come true. Hold on, this is getting a little bit silly, so let me clear things up. I'm playing this in 2020. The game was released in 2002 and it's based on 2027. There. And what this futuristic prediction is, if you haven't read the title of the video, is Speed Challenge, Jacques Villeneuve's Racing Vision. That's right, this is all the imagination of our favourite Canadian Formula 1 driver who isn't called Gilles. Or Lance, depending on how much the Turkish Grand Prix qualifying changed your opinion of him. In fact, the box itself says that Jacques took part in all stages of the game's development to guarantee you an intense, true-to-life experience at the wheel. Now how something can be true to life when it's set a quarter of a century into the future I don't know, but if it's crap, we know who to blame. So let's get stuck into the game and see what we have here. First of all, let's check out the menu screens, because you'd be surprised how many games make a complete mess of these, or unintentionally introduce some low-level hilarity. And happily, this game doesn't disappoint. Now manually inputting your name into the game isn't uncommon, nor is the fact that I like to take the opportunity to be incredibly immature. But typing in the country name, instead of just choosing it from a list, that's something I've never seen before. I suppose it's very inclusive, as long as your country doesn't have a long name. Sorry residents of the Federated States of Micronesia, it just won't fit. I don't know what my age has to do with anything either, although as it does have a limit I do feel sorry for the 101 year old war veterans who are excluded from playing this. Anyway, that's enough menu nonsense, let's get into the game proper. The first thing you're made aware of is how obnoxious these engines sound. It's horrible! It's also a very weird grid layout, we're all pointing straight at the barriers. I can't even begin to think what Jacques' imagination is playing out with this. Reaction times are clearly a lot worse in 2027. Let's watch that start again. Go flashes up on the screen, but it's at least another second before you're actually able to accelerate away. Wow, there's certainly a lot going on here, and that was all before the race began. But now we're underway, so let's see what the driving's like. It took a little while to get used to the handling, but you get the hang of it eventually. Nothing special though. The minimap is a strange one, in that it keeps disappearing. Look, the track just vanishes. It took me a while to work this one out, but it happens whenever you get within fart smelling distance of another car. It's a radar type thing showing you where the opposition is in relation to you. All it really is of course, is a couple of differently coloured rectangles. It's not even that much use, because the damage indicator covers up about a third of it, so quite often you can't see there's another car there anyway. So there's a few different modes within this game, such as a quick race and a championship, which is self-explanatory, and a season. Now the season is essentially a collection of mini championships. For example, this one starts with the American event, imaginatively titled, where you race on the American circuits. By the way, there's a section on the Rio track where there's a familiar tune I can't help but hear every lap I drive past it. 
buddy, you're a boy, make a big noise, playing in the street, gonna be a big man someday, you got mud on your face, you big disgrace, kicking your can all over the place, singing we will, we will rock you. Incidentally, I hate that song. Another of these rounds I found was the Sun Rain event, which from reading its introduction here, you would think is some races that start off sunny before it begins to rain, or something like that. Sort of like a British summer's day, or any British day for that matter. Well it's not quite that, because yes it does start off in the dry, you keep doing laps, and you finish, and it's still in the dry. Huh. But then it's followed by a race in the wet, at the same exact track. Yep, that's much more tedious, especially when there is a changeable weather option built into the game. Each of these mini championships can take up to an hour, which is a long time when you're having to race on the same circuits over and over again. There's not that many in the game. Now as you can see, there's five mini championships on the screen here, which sounds about right for a season, wouldn't you think? But hold on, this is just January! There's five rounds a month! That's 60! Six zero championships you've got to do to complete just one season! And to be honest, it's just not interesting enough a game for you to ever want to try and work through all of that. I don't know, maybe I was expecting something a bit more outlandish from something that's supposed to be set way in the future. Super fast rocket zooms or insane levels of grip or something, I'm not really sure. In fact this has the complete opposite, barely any grip. Anytime you go a nanometer off the track, you're skidding off into an ice rink, where you end up inadvertently performing a Torville and Dean routine. They may as well have called this Valtteri Bottas 2020 Turkish Grand Prix Simulator. My point is, if you're going to set a game in the future, why only go forward 25 years? If Jacques had extended his racing vision to say the year 2500, he could have gone completely mental with it, and it would have been way more fun. Blast thrusters and space lasers, that sort of thing. There is one cool futuristic concept in here though. Whenever you have a monster shunt and smash your car to bits, there is a noticeable effect on performance, sometimes to the point where the thing is undrivable. Ah, but be patient, because the car mends itself! Yay, keep on going and your damage meter gradually switches from orange to green and then gone again! Everything's tickety-boo! You can even see the front wing fixing itself if you look closely. That's pretty funky, one point for that, even though I can't quite see it becoming reality within the next seven years. But let's be fair to Jacques here, because there are a few things he's managed to predict correctly. For instance, he foresaw the IndyCar aero screen a full 18 years before its arrival. And as I mentioned, the cars he's dreamed up here clearly have no grip, and if we look ahead to the new Formula 1 rules for 2022, a big part of that is for the cars to have much less downforce. So we'll see how that pans out. And away from this game, let's not forget he, not unlike Lewis Hamilton, had the foresight to leave one of the most successful teams in F1 history, he moved from Williams, Lewis from McLaren, to join an unproven outfit based in Brackley in search of glory. Jacques was just 15 years too early. So clearly he was a man ahead of his time. Maybe the underlying problem with this game is that the PlayStation 2 simply wasn't ready for such a groundbreaking and revolutionary creation, and hopefully it will be remastered in 2027 as a launch title for the PlayStation 6, where we'll finally see its true potential. Or maybe it's just garbage. <laughs>